everyone, welcome back to my channel. You're in my kitchen again. That was not the plan for this week. Quick story time. When I was a kid, my parents one year got me a record player. When they went to wrap it, they realized that it was broken. So they signed the to from tag that my gift was from Rudolph. They blamed my broken record player on Rudolph. Well, I think Rudolph might have been in charge of the sound for the two videos that I recorded yesterday in our studio. I went to start editing my videos to get ready to upload them and there was no sound. So I'm going to improvise a little bit and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we did in those two videos because they were really good information and I would just want to make sure that I share that with you. And I'm going to make some candy pecans. It's a fun recipe. It's quick. It's easy and it's great for emergencies, which this kind of is. So if that sounds good to you, follow along and here we go. As usual, let me give you the disclaimer. If you hear tip tapping in the background, that is my dogs. Here are the remnants of our Universal Yums box. We did a Universal Yums unboxing. Here's a quick trip through what was in the box. It was a special holiday edition, and so there were different treats from different countries all over the world. We really, really enjoyed it. I'll tell you a little bit about each snack as I go through the booklet. We love this box so much. It is a monthly subscription box, and with it, they usually send you snack items from one country each month because of the holidays. This was a special box where they sent a few different countries. I will leave a link down below that can get you some money off of your first box. And if you choose to use that link, it helps me get money off of my next box as well. The first thing we tried were these roast turkey and stuffing potato crisps from the UK. We thought they were okay. Um, we mostly tasted the herbs in the stuffing and not so much the turkey, which was probably actually a good thing. The next thing we tried were these sugar and anise cookies from Spain. We weren't a huge fan. It is very strongly flavored with anise, so if you like that flavor, you would like these. If you don't, you will not enjoy them. The next thing we tried was salted egg yolk popcorn from Taiwan. I thought this was disgusting. I think Vivian agreed with me. Charlotte thought it was tolerable. My husband actually loved this. I was very surprised. These mocktail bonbons were a favorite of ours. They are from the UK. They are little chewy candies. They kind of reminded us of the inside of a Skittle in texture and about the same level of tartness, but each were flavored with different flavors like Prosecco or Bellini, things like that. Next, we tried these spice cookies from the Netherlands. They were really tasty. If you like cookie butter, they taste very similar to the cookies used for cookie butter. Very crunchy and small and would be really tasty with tea or coffee. We also tried this Alpine nut cake. It kind of reminded us of the texture of a Fig Newton and the filling was similar to a Fig Newton, but if you had a bunch of crunchy nuts in there as well. It was pretty good. This was one of my favorite items. They were cocoa dusted truffles from France. What more could you say? They're truffles, they're from France, chocolate. They were amazing. Next, we tried this chocolate cream Pandoro from Italy. It was basically like a sweet bread with chocolate inside. So similar to King's Hawaiian roll, but a little firmer in texture, not quite as soft and a delicious chocolate filling. These were one of Vivian's favorite, these apple and dark chocolate Domino Steins. They have a layer of gingerbread and then a layer of something similar to marzipan and then an apple jelly and then they're coated in a dark chocolate. They're very tasty. This was Charlotte's favorite. It is baklava from Jordan. She really enjoyed it. It was a nice flaky pastry with sugar syrup and nuts. Next up were these roasted garlic potato chips from the Czech Republic and we thought they were good. They were very strong on the garlic, obviously, but with the garlic, it sort of really lingered on your palate. You have to love garlic to want those. And our last item were these sea salt and caramel fudge pieces. They were sort of individually wrapped. They tasted very similar to a caramel with a slightly more crumbly crystalline texture. Overall, we really liked that box. It was a fun twist on their regular box and it was sort of special because it was different than usual for the holidays and every item in there was somehow linked to a winter holiday or some sort of religious 
celebration for each of the different countries and it was just kind of a fun way to try lots of different foods from lots of different countries. Big thumbs up for Universal Yums this month. After I filmed that video, I filmed my BarkBox unboxing. I will leave a link for BarkBox down below. It will get you $5 off your first box and it will get me $5 off of my next box if you use that link. I will say I was a little bit disappointed in the box as a human. I sort of just wanted it to be a little bit special because it's the holidays. I was hoping they might include something extra or just a little, I don't know, something special. They were Christmas themed toys, so that was Christmas related, but I just somehow, because it was a celebratory time of year, I was just hoping maybe they would throw in an extra or I don't know. So everything in the box was peanuts themed from the Christmas specials on TV, those peanuts, not like the food. And I was a little disappointed. One of the toys was a size medium toy. And I recently went in and updated that Tony is a large breed. I originally had it medium when we first got him because he was smaller then, but now that he's much bigger, I have switched that. So I don't know if they packed this box prior to me making that change or whether it was an oversight. I'll double check and make sure. But that being said, even though that toy was kind of small, Tony loves that toy. The entire thing fits in his mouth, but he is having a ball and he has not stopped playing with either of those toys since we filmed the video. So Tony gives it to pause up. All right, enough of my blabbering on about our missing video. Now I'm gonna show you how to make candied pecans. All right, this recipe is quick and easy to get into the oven and it just requires a tiny bit of monitoring it as it bakes. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is preheat your oven to 250 degrees. I will leave the original recipe linked down below. I have tweaked it because I don't have the full amount of pecans that they are calling for. So I also made one other change. I'll explain that in just a second. So all you're gonna need is pecans, salt, cinnamon, sugar. The original recipe calls for water. I am using vanilla, uh, Mexican vanilla to be specific, and one egg white. And that is all you need to make candied pecans. You're gonna put one egg white and the original recipe calls for one tablespoon of water. You're gonna whisk those until they're frothy. And then you are going to mix your sugar and your cinnamon and your salt. So the original recipe calls for a cup of sugar and then equal parts cinnamon and salt. So a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of salt. The original recipe also calls for you to mix these all up in a bowl. I am going to use a baggie. All right, there are my pecan halves in my baggie, my Walmart baggie, clearly. Now I am just going to add the egg white mixture in on top of the pecans. Now I'm just going to mix that like crazy. All right, I have those nicely coated with that egg white mixture. And now I'm going to toss in my cinnamon and sugar. Again, I'm gonna zip that close and shake like crazy. All right, and that is kind of what they look like at this stage. They are not very attractive, but I promise they will turn out delicious. Here's what they look like right before you put them in the oven. You are going to bake them at 250 degrees, sorry for the dogs, <laughs> for one hour and you're gonna toss them every 15 minutes. And that is it. Remember I said these were crazy easy. Now at this stage in the game, you are probably gonna be thinking, I have steered you wrong and these look terrible. And probably even the first two times you toss them, you're gonna think that there's no way these are gonna turn out well. I promise, trust the process, they will be delicious by the end of that hour. While they're baking, I will tell you, these are great as a bake sale item. I once had them at a bake sale and a lady came back several times and kept buying more. And then finally the last time she came, she said, how many do you have left back there? And she literally bought all of them. They're also great as a hostess gift, or I also put them on my cookie trays, and they're just really quick and easy and seem like way more effort than they really are. Here they are after the first 15 minutes. They still look pretty wet, and when I go to move them around, you still see a lot of wetness left on the tray. I'll show them to you again after the next 15 minutes. Here they are after I tossed them around and I made sure to get them nice and evenly distributed before I put them back in the oven for their second 15 minutes. Here we are, we're halfway through our bake time. I'm going to give these another toss and put them back in the oven for another 15 minutes. 
And I'm gonna take them out one more time, toss them again, and then put them back in for the last 15 minutes. All right, here we go with my last time giving them a toss around before putting them back in the oven for the last 15 minutes, and then they will be done. Also, I didn't mention this and it's not called for it in the recipe, but I do recommend using foil or even parchment paper. Just it'll make the cleanup a lot easier. As you toss them each time, you're losing a little bit of the coating and it winds up on the bottom of your pan. This way I can just toss this when it's over. All right, there we have our finished product. They are nice and crispy. My kitchen smells amazing. And these are really cute packaged up in cellophane with a nice bow, or you just sprinkle them onto your cookie tray. Here's my cookie sheet all ready to put away <laughs> because I used aluminum foil and I got to throw that in the trash. Here is our finished product. They will reach maximum crispy crunchiness once they have reached room temperature. When they're still warm, they are still a little bit soft. Thanks so much for watching and following along while I made those candied pecans. If you like my content, please give it a share, give it a thumbs up, and please hit subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Thanks again, and I will see you again next week.